Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about data grids or data tables. So I'm doing a series on the top three enterprise components that you're going to need in your application at some point. So I'm using a data grid or data table here from SyncFusion. SyncFusion has a complete UI component suite with some really powerful components that you can use in your app. They have a community license. You can read about it here to see if you can apply for that. So you need to have revenue below a million dollars and some other requirements here, and then you can use it for free. And they also have a free trial. And SyncFusion needs to get the word out, so that's why they're sponsoring this series of videos so when it comes to data grids or data tables there are a couple of things you need to pay attention to so you need to get the data from somewhere it can be a local data source like a json file it can also be a remote data source maybe you're getting the data from some api maybe it's even live data and then you want to allow the user maybe to sort and maybe to filter and you want to be able to paginate through the data and you want your data grid and data table to be responsive as well which this component is out of the box as well and there's also more advanced things like virtualization right so i'll quickly show you how to add this data grid grid or data table to your page and then we'll talk about all of those things you need to pay attention to all right so now i have a clean slate here so i'm going to go to the syncfusion docs because they have a really nice guide on how to implement this in your react or next.js app and so this works out of the box with the latest next.js with server and client components as well they have a very clear guide here so i will just go through the steps here we need to install the syncfusion react packages so i will just do npm install that all right, so that's installed now. Then we need to import the CSS styles as well. So I will just copy this and I will put this in my globals.css file here. I'm using Next.js here and this is what it looks like now. All right, so the next step would be to actually get some example data that we can actually display on the page. So they give you some dummy data here. I have copied all of that and I have put that in a file here in my lib folder called uh, data source. All right, so this is just some dummy data. You can see it has, it's just an array of objects, all right? so you can see we have we have about 10 or 15 of them and now we have the data we have installed all the packages now we actually want to display it on the page of course so here i have the page the page currently is still empty all right so i've created an account on syncfusion and they will give you this key here that you can register so you can try out their components for free now i can add their components here which is called simply grid component and it will automatically import this for me from that package that we installed. So this is the uh, root component that you need to use. And it needs to know which data you want to display. Right? So here we want to say data source. Well, we put that in a separate file here. Here we have uh, data source.ts. So let me actually import that here. So let's import data from data source. All right, so that's my data here. Now I want to connect that here to the grid components. I just say data source. And it's just going to be our data here. So if I save here, all right, so now we've connected the data to our grid here, but you will get an error here in Next.js because we need to make this a client component, right? So I'm doing it here on the in the page component. I typically don't recommend that you make the entire page a page component because now all the imports will also become client components. But for this demo here, I think it's fine. All right, so then if you go back here, you can see that we now have our data displayed here as a grid of data, right? Now, by default, it's gonna take up all the space here. So let's actually restrain the size a little bit. So I can use the height and width properties on here. I can set the height to let's say 200 and the width to 800. So I think that looks a little bit better and let's actually center it in the page. Right, just using uh, Flexbox here, I'm going to say justify center for the horizontal axis, items center for vertical. Now to make that work, the entire page does need to span the entire height of the viewport. So we're going to use this and then it's in the center. Now you can see this does not look great because Syncfusion doesn't really know how we want to display it. So by default, it's just going to use the keys in these objects, so order ID, customer ID. It's going to use all of them as the heading here for the columns. So it's taking up quite a lot of space here. And usually in the real world, you don't want to have a column for each uh, property here, right? So let's customize all of this a little bit better. So let's say we only want to have columns for the order ID, the customer ID, employee ID, and maybe also some other ones, ship country and freight, right? So what you do is you open up the component here and you work with columns. So you need to wrap it in a columns directive. And then in here, you can have one directive per heading. So for example, I can create a column directive self-closing here for the field, let's say order ID. Right? So this needs to be the exact same casing as the property in the object here, right? And they all have an order ID, right? That's how it works, right? Now let's import this from Syncfusion as well. All right, so if I save here, grid here right now only has the order ID as a column, right? And the values for each row here, they are the values that you will see here in our array of objects, right? So 10, 248, that's the first one. And then it goes down like that. Now what we can do is just duplicate this three more times. Let's say we also want to see the customer ID. 
uppercase, the employee ID, and the ship country. So if I save here, we should now see three more columns. And now you can see we have four columns and it looks much better because there's more space available. All right, now by default, it's gonna show all of the data here on, on one page, you could say. So basically there's no pagination right now. So one of the first things that you may wanna do is make sure that you don't load all of the data here at once. You wanna paginate through the data. So with pagination as well as sorting and filtering and grouping, as we'll see with these features, we need to inject that here as a service. So there's also an inject component that we get from Syncfusion. You can import that. And then it's gonna be services and it needs to be an array. So what we want here is uh, the page service. Now we need to import this as well. So I imported this um, up here. So page is coming from uh, React Grids. So it turns out that my auto complete here was actually importing it from React Charts. We'll look at the charts in a different video. For now, we're gonna import that from the React Grids package. Right, this needs to come from this package only. So then we should also get rid of the red squiggly lines here. Yeah. So now we have the correct import as well as we have injected this service, but that alone doesn't work. We also need to explicitly allow it here on the root component. So we need to say allow paging and we can just set that to true or leave it off. In JSX, the presence of the prop means that it's going to be true. So if we do this, you can see we now have very nice pagination out of the box. All right, so now if we go back, you can see we have some really nice pagination here, but that not everything here is displayed on one page. If I go here, you can see there is some additional data here. Now we can customize this. So maybe we wanna, we have 15 items in total. We can say something like page settings. So you can customize this further. So here you can say page size. So how many do you, how many rows do you wanna have per page? So let's say five. If I do five here on the root component, you can customize all of that. Now you can see the first page has only five, second one has five too, and the third one of course has five too. All right, now if we go back, you can see we have a really nice data grid here. I think this looks much better and now we can customize this even further. Before we inject more services here, one other thing we can also do here is we can customize some things about these columns here. For example, how wide they are, if they should be aligned to the left or to to the right so i'm going to change this a little bit so i changed it into the following so the fields are still the same but now i also added this width prop to each of them so i can set the width to 100 for each of them and also the text alignment so i can say the first one should be aligned to the right instead of the left which is the default and this one as well to the right this one to the right as well we can also set the format and if we do all of that what we will get now is this so we see that the order ID now is aligned to the right, right? Previously it was sitting on the left here. And the same for employee ID and freight. Freight now also has this dollar sign in front of it because we added the format here. So you can control all of that as well. You can also localize the currency. And if you have a date, you can also localize that. All right, let's make it even more sophisticated. We also want to do some sorting. So maybe I wanna sort for the highest freight price. So that's another service that we need to inject. So here we had pagination, now we're also gonna add sort. So I also need to import this from Syncfusion's package here. And then it's just, well, we have added it here. And then we also need to allow it here on the root component. So here we have allow paging. Now I'm gonna say allow sorting, right? So if I save here, now when you go back and sometimes you have to refresh, now what you can do is you can click on the column heading and you can determine whether you want to display it ascending or descending right so that was also super easy to implement as well another important feature you often want to add is filtering so if you have a lot of data maybe you have thousands of of rows here let's say you maybe only want to see the freights that are at least a thirty dollars let's say or you want to see only the order ids that start with one zero right so now you want to have some more advanced filtering so that's not a service that we can add here so i can say filter import that allow allow filtering and it also has some settings that you can set filter settings so it's going to be like excel we want to say excel type excel so if you do that now we get this icon here so if we click on this one you can see uh, it actually also has sorting by default in there this will give you some more powerful ways of filtering the data right so here under number filters we can do things like greater than or less than or equal between even like a range if you want to customize the look of this data grid, they have a theme studio on the website. So by default, it has this Material 3 theme, but they have these other themes out of the box as well, including dark mode here as well. And that's not just for the data grid, it's for any components here that they offer for React here. And in the documentation here, they actually have a lot of demos here for all sorts of customization. So if you want to have a search feature here, they show you exactly how to do it here. So maybe I want to search for chai, let's say, I can press enter and it will show me 
all the rows here that have to do with Chai. You also need to pay attention to how users can select rows and columns and cells. So by default, if you just click here, it's just gonna select one uh, cell. So this is the default behavior. When you click, it highlights the entire row here and the one cell that you clicked in gets this rectangular shape. So if you copy this, it will actually copy the entire row here. So you're, you're essentially selecting the entire row here. You can see it copied all the data from that row. If you wanna select multiple rows at once, I can hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows and you can uh, select multiple rows like this. But you can see it does not select the rows in between. However, if you hold shift, it will actually select that entire range. Right, all customizable here. They show you exactly how to do that here with the source code as well. Now, of course, they also have the checkbox option here. So you can also add a checkbox and that way you can select the row. Another powerful feature is grouping. So here we have a table with order ID, customer name, and so on. And the data right now is just displayed row by row here. Not, there's not really any organization here, but let's say I wanna see all the data by country, let's say. So I can click and drag this onto this area here. And now it will show me for each country, all of the relevant data. So for Argentina now, I can see all the data here, right? So this is grouping together data for a particular country and it's, it works with pagination and as you can see here austria and all, all these other countries right so here as you go through the list here you will see that all the countries now are organized right and they show you exactly how to do that here in the source code on the documentation as well very often you want to calculate the total you want to aggregate the data together so here they show you for example how to take all of this freight data together and sum it up so you can see at the end it's going to be some sum and even an average and these features can be combined as well so we we just saw how to group together data to add some more organization but then maybe we also want to have this aggregation for that particular group. So here they show you an example of taking the beverages and organizing the table, grouping the table by beverages, and then also calculating the total for that particular group. Right? So that's a powerful combination as well. Very important for data grid or data table is how you scroll through the data. So by default, there's no pagination, right? So all of the data is essentially just displayed right here. And as you can see, the column headings will scroll down with us. So especially when you have a lot of data, of course, you want to see what type of data this is. So of course, it's beneficial that the column headings scroll with us. And by default, it's only the column headings. But let's say maybe you want to have certain rows be frozen as they call it so basically they also scroll with you so here in this one in this example you can see that th these two particular rows scroll with us as we scroll down right so that's maybe something you want and then we need to talk about virtual scrolling versus infinite scrolling with these data tables with these data grids you may have so much data that of course you don't want to display it all at once you don't want to load all of the data at once so you're going to have to find a way to deal with that in an optimal manner. We've seen pagination, right? So you, you just display, let's say, 10 per page and you can paginate through it. But maybe you don't want pagination. You, you want to scroll through the data. So let's actually start with infinite scrolling. So infinite scrolling, maybe you've seen this on social media or on the, the social media apps, right? So here, if I load 100,000 rows, you can see that not all of the rows are loaded at once, right? So here, this is, this is quite a lot, but this is not 100,000. But as soon as it hits the bottom of the scroll area, here it will load the next batch right so you can see there was a sort of a glitch there and it loaded the next batch of data right so this is beneficial because it doesn't have to load all of the data at once it's loaded on demand as you scroll down you can see when i scroll down it loads the next batch but as i scroll up you can see the data is still there so as you scroll down and, and so as you scroll down more and more it's going to load up more and more data into the memory, right? So it will not erase the data from the previous batch. And it's still here. As I scroll up, it's still here. So all of this gets loaded into memory. So if you have a lot of data with infinite scrolling at some point, you, you still may get into that performance issue. So you may want to consider virtual scrolling as well or virtualization. So virtualization, if I load 100,000 rows here, it works very similar to infinite scrolling. But here, as I scroll down, we don't have to wait until it hits the end of the scroll area. It will, actu it will actually load the data as I scroll down. So if I scroll down very quickly, you can see there is some loading here. And as I scroll up now, you can see it has to load the data again. So it doesn't, it doesn't keep all of the data in memory. Right, so this is probably best for performance. And so if you have a huge data set, this is something you want to take a look at. All right, now what if you want to allow your users to interact with the data in the data grid or data table? So they allow you to do these CRUD operations. So users can 
add something, right? So they can add a row and they can, of course, also uh, edit it, right? So they can edit it in line. That's uh, right? So here I can edit the name of Paul, right? I can change the name like this and then click update. And then as the user does this, there are certain events that we can hook into in our code. And so, right, so then you can in turn persist that in your database. So that was inline editing. So it's inline. There's also dialog editing. So as I double click there, you can see a dialog opens up and it takes over the entire page essentially. Now this dialog has certain styling by default. Maybe with dialogs, you want to style it the same way as the rest of your dialogs in your software or app. And they allow you to customize that as well. So you can create a custom dialog. You can also allow your users to export the data in Excel, PDF, and CSV format. And those are basically all the features I wanted to show you. Now there's a lot to it. It's a very powerful component. You can see they have tons of demos here. So I recommend that you look, take a look at it and find some examples that are close to your use case. So I think it's very likely that it covers your use case as well. So I would say check it out. The link is in the description. And I want to thank Think Fusion for sponsoring this video. And we have two other very critical enterprise components that you as a developer are going to run into sometimes. So let's quickly go to the other two.